Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So today's quite a quick video. We're looking at the Super Scope by Marantz CRS2014 and it's quite a quick video. It, obviously it's specific to this model, but it does actually have things in common with uh, a lot of other radio cassettes as well. Basically, I just want to show you how to get to uh, the heads for cleaning, but also how to get to the belts if you wanted to change the belts as well. So I'm just going to do this real sort of short and simple, really, um, sort of one one video angle, one take, as it were. Um, it's not such an onerous a job. All you need is one screwdriver and we'll get going. So first thing is there are three small screws. So these ones really are fairly small little screws here. There's two on the top and one just in the middle there like so and the only other length of screw is the one that holds the two um, back case ones here and they're the same length as each other so these ones are longer ones so we get the four of these out of course they don't always want to come out first time with the uh, the screwdriver if the magnet's not strong enough or if they get caught up in the back case but either way they will come out easy enough once we actually remove the, the back case you can see this one's getting stuck i'm not going to mess about too much trying to get them out now they'll fall out in a second once we get the back case off so that's the third one i'm done there we go you can see the length of the actual screws they're quite long ones these and the fourth one is just here. So very simple. There are two more screws that we need to get to of the same length. But they are actually inside the unit, which we'll get to in a moment. In fact, they are, might be visible just here in the battery compartment, although you don't actually have to get them out right now. So basically, there's the back cover, and all I'm just gonna do is disconnect the antenna from the rear there. So as you can see, nothing too complex about that one, no transformer mounted to the board or anything like that. So we'll just put that to one side. In fact, I'm gonna take the screws out here while I can, just slightly off camera, but whilst I can get to the screws, I may as well put them safe. There we go, right. So the next job really is to, if we wanted to, we can actually take the uh, two long screws out here, like so. And these are the same length as the two long ones that were in the, in the back cover, like so. And that's then gone. So, what we can do now actually, if we want to, is actually remove the top, the top cover. And to do that, we're just gonna take the, uh, the knobs off. So we've got one, two, three, oops, and four, like so. They're all, the three on this side are the same, one just slightly different on the uh, on the FM and long wave sort of band selector, because that's got like more of a chicken head part on it. But other than that, they're all the same. So we put them to one side. And we'll also remove the tuning dial as well. That just pulls off. Now the top panel is really quite, it's easy, but it's tricky. So that might sound counterintuitive, but uh, there we go. So what we do is it literally clips out easily enough, except for there is one screw just down inside here through this central access hole, which we need to remove. And if you don't remove this screw, you'll be trying to uh, scratch around. There it is. You'll be trying to scratch around, pull in and gently tweak in and getting a spudger out and all sorts for about an hour, trying to pick it off and can't understand why it won't come off. Ask me how I know. 
So once you've got that screw out, that literally just pops away like that. And there we go. So that's how we can access things like the control pots if we wanted to, or the VU meter or the switches, um, or indeed the radio gauge if you wanted to clean that off. That's all accessible now. If you wanted incidentally to go ahead and do any work on the VU meter, then that's when you remove this metal face plate now to get to that. But anyways, here we go. So, just need to remove couple more screws here now from inside the battery compartment again these are long ones so there's only two lengths of screws so far there were the, the small ones that went in the middle and up in the top there all the rest have been the same the same size i.e longer ones like so and then the next job is literally to remove the whole section away from the casing now. Now there's a couple of things to watch out for when we do this. And I'm just gonna be really careful as I, as I talk to you. Basically, it kind of unpegs from the casing. Now what you can't, well you can't see so easily from here is that the actual microphones are connected on fairly short cables into the corner. So just make sure you've got some tweezers or similar. So I've just got a pot of bits and pieces here, forgive me. But just get some tweezers or something just to, just to help. What you wanna do is try and coax Gently coax the microphones out without pulling on the cables. That's what you don't want to do. There we go. So we literally tease them out. Um, otherwise, there's a risk that you can actually detach the cables. It's not the end of the world because obviously they can be soldered back on easily enough. But there we go. So we just, you might not have seen that off camera, but the other one's just out as well. Right, good. Next job is basically just to connect or disconnect the speakers, I should say. And the speakers have four connections or two each. Okay, so you can, you could potentially leave them on, but to be honest, they're not quite long enough. So we're just gonna, just gonna take those off as well. Like so. And that is the actual front casing now with the cassette door and the speakers. And that's basically all that's in there. So then that gives us access to the cassette deck. So this is, if you want to change the belts now, I'll just zoom in a little bit now. Basically, we've got four screws to remove. There's two here and two just on here also in the corners. So these ones are easy, really easy to get to. And they're slightly longer actually than the two at the front. So there's those two, one and two, just there. Now we move on to the next two. And these two both have uh, sort of grinding points on them. So, Underneath the screw is actually also a little earthing strap, a little eye, eyelet, which screws into the, uh, the cassette chassis. So there's one screw. And then the other one is just in the opposite, opposite corner. It's just slightly off angle there. There we go. So that one, is there and then once you've got those four screws out I'm gonna actually take this one out I could leave it in the eyelet but although it's tricky to get out now if I don't the thing will only fall out in the middle of the mechanism when you're not expecting it so that's clear now good right and then the only thing that remains to do just for access sake is the actual 
multi uh, connector here, this little double connector. So if we pull that one out, we should now be free to gently extricate the cassette mechanism. And we just turn that over like so. And there she is. So I'll just put a little bit of bubble wrap underneath one second. Just to stop anything from catching on any uh, capacitors or anything underneath. But essentially that is it. So once we've got to this stage, if you want to, um, to change the belts, all you literally do now is unscrew these two screws. That removes the plate. In fact, I'll just do it for the sake of completeness, just to say I've shown you. So that one screws into there. You've got one here. Mindful of the little earthing strap, of course. So then that plate can be removed like so. And then that literally is all you need to do to replace the belts. One is off, two is off, and that is it. So just be mindful of the fact that the uh, the pulley on the motor has um, has two, two grooves in it. Okay, the bottom one for the main pulley, the top one for the uh, secondary pulley there, and that is it. So that is always a great opportunity to do two things, or three things actually. One is put a drop of oil just on the, uh, the bottom of the, the, cap, uh, the motor there. And then two is to clean the pulleys and fit the belts. But the third thing as well is just to get some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, because when better opportunity is there than to actually um, clean and service uh, the heads and um, clean up the pinch roller and that kind of thing. Um, and if you wanted to change the belt as well, by the way, for the counter, of course, that one just sits just there. So that's super easy to replace as well. Um, so there we go. So basically to refit now, all you're doing once you've put the belts back on is to put the cover plate back onto there, screw that down, essentially turn it over, put the multi-clip back in, the four screws, one at each corner of the cassette deck me mechanism, and then away you go again. Connecting your speakers, put your microphones back in, screw it back together, jobs are good in. So there we go, I hope you found that useful, and uh, please subscribe, we've got plenty more work to do, lots of eight track stuff, personal stereos, boom boxes that we wanna work on, lots of other stuff. So um, as I say, thanks for watching, please do subscribe, hit the notifications bell, and uh, keep updated for future videos, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care, bye-bye.